Greetings, Facebook family. Greetings, Instagram family. I am giving everyone an opportunity to come on in and to hear this. I would ask that you please press the share button so that other people will get a chance to hear the information that will be disseminated today. It is not my intention to be before you long. It is my intention to give you very clear, concise, thoroughly researched information so that you then are able to take this information and share it with accuracy, with documentation, so that it's not somebody's opinion that you are receiving, but it is actually well documented. So since the family is coming in, I'm going to begin. I will then explain to you why we started this at 555. As a matter of fact, let me go ahead and give you the significance. The spiritual meaning of 555 signifies change, a time of preparation, and a new wave of energy. I'll share that again. The spiritual meaning of 555 signifies change, a time of preparation, and a new wave of energy. I have been relatively silent on Facebook for the last nine years concerning Thanksgiving. When people wish me a happy Thanksgiving, I simply don't respond. And usually when people are around me long enough, they figure out why. And so instead of us trying to figure it out, I'm going to make everything resoundingly clear and plain on today. I want to be very clear because I need you to press the share button and share this with other people. This is not a condemnation type situation. This is not a you should know better type situation. How would you know? How would you know? I, on September 14th, 2014, accepted the charge to be a queen in the comedic community from our community elders and from the ancestors. And so in me being a queen, I have certain responsibilities to help the community wherever I see there being a place where there is a breach or a brokenness. So this is why I am a healer. Greetings, Khadijah, Imhotep, Jackie. Greetings, Dorothy. The reason that I am a healer, what I am sharing today is a point of healing. This is not to make you feel bad for spending time with your family. This is to educate you. Every generation is to do better than the generation before. And when we know better, we do better. The majority of you all that are here with me on Facebook and Instagram on this simulcast have children, and some of you have grandchildren. We owe a responsibility to them to teach them the truth. Many of us were taught false information about being Black about being African-American. Everyone has labeled us all of these different things. But in me being here today, I'm gonna give you the reason why I'm here. And I'm gonna bring it to a 2018, a keep in mind this is 11, 22, 2018. So Thanksgiving was moved up one week this year because of the power of today. Today is two master numbers back to back. So any ritual that's done on 11-22 is catapulted in energy. And so what has happened is a universal ritual has been moved up one week so that the energy of that ritual is stronger. So Queen, how are you going to relate Thanksgiving to 
2018. How are you going to make, you get ready to talk about some Indians, and we heard all of that about the pilgrims and all of that. We heard about that in, in elementary school. So what does that have to do with us? Let me give you a reminder. Terrence Crutcher, Tulsa, Oklahoma, September 16th, 2016. July 6th, 2016, Falcon Heights, Minnesota, Philando Castile. July 5th, 2016, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Alton, Sterling. <clears throat> April 4th, 2015, North Charleston, South Carolina, Walter Scott. April 2nd, 2015, Tulsa, Oklahoma, Eric Harris. March 6th, 2015, Madison, Wisconsin, Tony. Robinson. December 2nd, 2014, Phoenix, Arizona, Romaine, Brisbane. November 22nd, 2014, Cleveland, Ohio, Tamir Rice. He was 12 years old. October 20th, 2014, Chicago, Illinois, Laquan, McDonald. August 9th, 2014, Ferguson, Missouri, Michael Brown Jr. July 17th, 2014, New York City, New York, Eric Garner. So Queen Neat, what does that have to do with anything? It has everything to do with everything, I would ask that as we're doing the preliminaries, you press the share button so that other people will be able to get the advantage that you have of having a thorough piece of information shared with you that you can then share with your children. See, what we have to understand is when we know better, we do better. And so we can create new celebrations for our children. There is nobody standing at our door with a whip threatening us that if we do not participate in this particular celebration that they have programmed us to participate in, that we're going to be whipped, that we're going to lose our job, that we're going to lose our housing. That is not the threat. So if you're listening today, or even if you listen on the replay, in your family, you're probably the black sheep. You're probably the one that really doesn't fit in, the one that goes against the mold that isn't like everybody else in the family. What we are not taught, the black sheep is always the most special sheep in the herd. And so for your family, you may be able to be the salvation of your family in them having the correct information. Now you do what you want, but you owe an account to at least get correct information. So I thought I would change my look up a little bit today from what you normally see with me wrapped or with my hair cascading so that you would be able to put a face to a name the next time you think of somebody that is Indian, quote unquote. And I'm gonna explain how negative that word is. What a spit in the face of the, of the Aboriginal Americans who look just like me, that word is. See, we completely detach from the word Indian and anything that happens to an Indian because when we think of Indians, we think of these red skinned people with straight hair that don't have nothing to do with, with us and that don't look like us. 
And then we go back to the tales of slavery where so-called red Indians would then tell us, come on, I got you. I'm going to take you to safety just to turn around and take us back to master. Those are true stories. So let's get a good understanding of what these different types of Indians are so that we can understand what actually happened. If you have not yet looked at my Facebook page, I would encourage you to go look at my Facebook page so that you can see the different types of Indians. There is your $5 Indian. So the $5 Indians were the white people who would pay $5 literally, usually very, very dirt poor white people so that they could then come on our reservations. They would come onto our reservations and purchase our land and oftentimes kill the <laughs> black Indians, for lack of a better word, until I help you understand better, that actually owned the property. Just come in and kill them, pay $5. Now you're an Indian, you can have the Indian's land, just kill them. We won't prosecute you. Sounds very familiar. Sounds like what we have here, where white cops have no fear of shooting a black man point blank to death because we got you, bro. You good. You good. So this was the $5 Indian. This was the white Indian. And so we get taught that these white Indians came in with the black Indians and that's where we get these red-skinned Indians that we see now. And I would renounce that as a lie from the pit of hell. Where you get these red-skinned Indians that you see, these are the same people that you see in North Dakota, that you see in Washington, that you see all across where it's cold, that you see in Canada, that you see all the way down in California, that you now see called Mexicans in Mexico. These people were Russians. They were Russian scavengers from Siberia. So when you see the Siberian Huskies, these people crossed over the Bering Strait, went into Alaska, populated Alaska, went all the way across the United States in the coldest portions because they came from Siberia. So they went where it was cold. They also came all the way down, populated the whole West Coast of the United States and went into uh, Mexico. Now, these same people encountered people that were already living in this land. They did not come and populate the land, no. Let me give you some further history. And please, check behind me. Oh, I invite you, check behind me as I enjoy my coconut. So there is a thing that was called Pangea. All of the land masses were one. So when things started out, there were not seven separate continents. There was all one big land mass. And in there being one big land mass, Everybody that populated that land mass was African. We are the mothers of civilization. It is not what you see now. One big land mass, just like you've got Africa, the big land mass, and everybody that was on the land mass was African everywhere. That's why you can find Aborigines in Australia, you find them in New Zealand, you find them in Iceland, you find us everywhere because we were the original people everywhere. You go down into Mexico, you look at the old Mac heads with the great big noses and the great big lips. Those are who we were. We were everywhere. And so we have been placed into one continent and called Africa. 
And then we got sold a Kunta Kinte lie by Alex Haley, who stole that story from another book that was called The African Trade. He got sued shortly after Roots was uh, aired. And so the deep thing is they used that brother to write that book. And because he was a black man writing that book as though it was the history of his family, everybody black jumped on board. Yemitep Mina jumped on board and said, oh, we all came over here on slave ships. And so we began to believe that story. Some black people did come over on slave ships. But for real, for real, the majority of us were already here. When the European colonists came into the Americans and they came through the Massachusetts Bay Colony and they befriended the people that were already here, the people that were already here, we would consider black Indian. We knew how to make the land do what it do. We knew how to cultivate because we had been here for generations upon generations upon generations. This was our land. This is why Newark is called New Egypt because this was our land. We were already here. So after we were kind enough to teach them how to cultivate land here, how to make things grow, they then enslaved us and took our land. Why do you think you have so many places in New York, in New Jersey, everywhere all throughout Boston that is named after Indian names? And so the $5 Indian piece is deep because these people that crossed over the Barian Straits, these Siberians, then paid $5 and they began to take our land and they began to enslave us and they took on Indian identity. So you talk about identity theft, this is identity theft on a whole nother level. So they continue to populate, the reservations became full of these red skin Indians and so when we hear anything about Indian, we completely disconnect. There are even black people that turn around and say, oh, I got Indian in my blood. Of course you do. Of course you do. Duh. Yeah, we all do pretty much. So get out of the mindset that, oh, I'm superior if I've got Indian in my blood. I have two great grandparents that are 100% Indian which is nothing but an Aboriginal American. They were the original people here. Look on my page so you can see what I'm talking about. So Queen, what does this have to do? I'm at home with Thanksgiving with my family. We giving thanks to God for my family. What's this got to do with anything? Let me give you some history, beloved. And I don't care if you're on here and you're white, you're black, you're whatever however you choose to identify yourself, let me help you really understand when you participate in this food sacrifice ritual of Thanksgiving, the ancestor graves that you are spitting on. I, as a comedic practitioner, I, as a Yoruba practitioner, cannot teach my students about pouring libations to the ancestors if I do not educate them on any actions that they are doing that cause them to spit on the graves of ancestors. Queen, how does Thanksgiving spit on the graves of ancestors? Thank you for asking. So how did we get Thanksgiving in a land of such ingratitude? a place that will not even pay reparations after using us for years to build them. Why would we then have a national day of Thanksgiving? Let me tell you what happened. 
in July of 1636, the Pequot, and somebody please type it in the room, one of my students, P as in Peter, E-Q-U-O-T, the Pequot War began July of, of 1636. This happened in the Massachusetts Bay Colony. That's where it began. We know that area now to be Connecticut, to be Massachusetts, to be Rhode Island, to be Vermont. But all of that was one big landmass. And so the Pequot Indians were not willing to give their land up. They said, no, this is our land. Now, what I'd like to challenge you to do today, go to your search engine. Don't believe me because I'm pretty, baby. No, go to Google. Type the word Pequot Indians into your Google search engine and then click on images and tell me what you see. Do it right now. It would just, it would do my little heart so good. Go to Google, click on images, put in the word Pequot, P as in Peter, E, Q as in Queen, U-O-T, Pequot Indians. Put those words in and tell me what you see. I'll even pause because I want you to tell me what you see. Put those words in. And I'm going to put another word in there for you to look up as well. Let me put this in the room myself. By now, all of you should have looked. And you may be a little bit confused. You don't see a bunch of red-skinned people with straight hair. You see people that look like me, that look like you, that look like your family reunion. That's what you see when you type Pequot Indians. And what you see when you type Pequot Indians is a picture from 2017 of the Pequot tribe. So if they look like that after being enslaved, Wow, how dark do you think they were 400 years ago when they were fighting the Europeans? How much melanin do you think that those people had? And they were not alone. The Narragansett tribe also decided to help us. They said, we are not giving up our land and we are not going to let you give up your land either. Look up the, the Narragansett tribe and see what you see. You see your family reunion in there. That's what you see when you look up Narragansett and when you look up Pequot. Let me give you one more so you understand how egregious this actually is and why I read those 15 brothers' names. The next is the Mohegan tribe. The Mohegan tribe said, no, we're not going to let them take anything else. They've taken smallpox and tried to kill all the tribes up here. No, we joining in with you too. We got your back. You never wondered why the Indians are in tribes and the Africans are in tribes because we're the same people. That's why. That's why Thanksgiving is so egregious. So wait a minute. Let's keep talking now. When you Googled Mohegan, you started seeing white people. Y'all remember the term, the last of the Mohegans? All of a sudden, the Mohegans turned white, shockingly. In 1636, during the Pequot Wars, they weren't white. But all of a sudden, they white now. The last of the Mohegans was the continuous murder of the Mohegan tribes and the identity theft that currently is taking place by those red-skinned Indians. So Queen, thank you for the history lesson on the Indians. 
What's this got to do with me and my turkey? Let me share that with you, beloved. Again, this is not to chastise you, to ding you, to make me a superior. I've known this information since 2004. The last time I celebrated Thanksgiving was 2004. And in me doing this, I lost my mother. My mother did not speak to me for six years because I would not celebrate Thanksgiving. I was the one that would go home and cook the whole Thanksgiving dinner for everyone. Once I did the research back then, and the internet wasn't popping like it is now, so we had to actually use books and do research and do all of that. But I knew in 2004 that something, greetings, Imhotep, uh, Anki Ma'at, Candace, something wasn't right. And so I told my mother, I said, I can't come do this anymore. And my mother was a staunch Christian and she said, it's because you've given up Jesus. And so I don't want anything to do with you. And so for six years, she didn't speak to me and then she died because of Thanksgiving. So this Thanksgiving thing is real, real to a lot of people. And a lot of us say, well, yeah, queen, I know about Thanksgiving, but I just do it to go be with my family. And I just do it to be with me to make my grandmama happy. Okay. So let me ask you this. I named you 14 brothers since 2014 that have been wrongfully killed by the police. If in 25 years they declare a national day of Thanksgiving because they cleaned up and killed some black men and your grandmama want to cook, are you going to go to that too? That's real talk. Because see, that's what happened. Those black Pequot Indians, 700 of them, on Wednesday, November 28, 1636, Governor Will William Bradford, who was the governor of the Massachusetts Bay, Qua Bay Colony, decided, I'm going to take this set of land once and for all. We already at war with them. So we're going to give them a traumatic blow. We haven't been able to defeat them. This is November. We've been at war since July. I'm going to give them something show sure enough. So he put the body of a dead white man in a boat on Wednesday, November 28th. And then on Wednesday, no, no, the 26th, on Wednesday, when on Thursday, November 27th, he then sent his soldiers to the Green Corn Festival. Queen Neat, what is the Green Corn Festival? The Green Corn Festival was an Indian um, festival. It was the Indian New Year. And so anybody that had any kind of beef with one another, especially the men, they sat with their chairs in the four direction and their backs were to each other. And so what they said was, I choose this day to drop my rocks and I choose to have your back as my brother. I know I got issues with you, but I choose to drop my rocks. I choose to have your back and I feel safe enough with you that with my back turned, you won't stab me in my back. So they did this beautiful festival. And all of the women and children were in teepees in the middle of the circle. This is the way they slept during the green corn festival. And all of the men took turns sleeping on the outside of the perimeter. So Governor Branford sent his troops in from the four directions and they began to shoot all of the men to death. Keep in mind, some of them were asleep and the ones that were awake, they ambushed them all 
and killed the men first. Then they took torches and they lit all of the teepees on fire. So after these women and children had watched their husbands be assassinated, they were then lit on fire. In Governor Branford's book, which I have posted on my page so that you can see it, it is his memoirs where he brags about what he did to those black Indians. It's called A Plymouth Plantation, 1620 to 1640 by William Branford. He said his men came back to him on that Friday and they complained about how long it took for the bodies of the women and the children to burn while they were forced to stand outside and be in the cold weather of Boston, waiting for those bodies to burn. All of that melanin to burn. Press the share button, please. And so he said, well, I tell you what, this was on Friday, the 29th of November. 26th. 28th of November. He said, I tell you what, every day or every fourth Thursday of the year, we will celebrate every fourth Thursday of November every year. We're going to celebrate. We're going to celebrate burning to death those black women and children. We're going to celebrate shooting those black men to death because we killed those savage blacks. And so I'm going to declare a national day of Thanksgiving. And for the next 100 years, every governor after him declared the fourth Thursday of November as the national day of Thanksgiving in celebration of killing 700 black people. And so we had to then cook the food for Thanksgiving for Massa and them to celebrate killing our relatives. And so that slave mentality has continued on. And so we take and we waste rent money buying all of this food in order to celebrate killing 700 black people. This has nothing to do with thanking God for anything because all it is is a competition of who can make the best food, Emetep Nikki. This is about ego. This has nothing to do with I'm making this food to thank God for providing for us. That's a lie from the pit of hell. This is a competition to show how well I can cook. Look at how, look at my food, look at my skills. Come on now. This has nothing to do with thanking God. And so you mean to tell me that your family can't come together except around celebrating killing black people? Is that what you telling me? You telling me that since ain't nobody told you you got any black Indian in your blood that it's cool to celebrate killing 700 black people? And we know it? See, it's one thing when you didn't know it. Up till today, you didn't know it. Because see, what do you then tell your children? Are we going to keep on lying to our babies year after year after year about this Thanksgiving and us giving thanks to God? You had crackers giving thanks to God for killing 700 black people. And now we making food, we making meals, we going into gluttony celebrating the same thing. And you can't say, oh, it don't mean it to me because that's the origin. You are participating in a food sacrifice ritual to celebrate the death of 700 ancestors. 700 ancestors. 
So while you're pouring your libations, pour libations for the 700 Pequot Indians that were killed, for whom we have the national day of Thanksgiving. God is not pleased with this. Our ancestors cannot be pleased with this. And we cannot continue to turn a blind eye in the name of making grandmama happy. You might as well go back to church and go back to Jesus to make grandmama happy. At what point do you stand up like a two bald man and say no? I've put down the research behind the sister. I see that this is true. I'm not going to keep doing this. I'm not going to celebrate the death of 700 black people. Can you imagine sitting in a teepee with your baby in your arms being lit on fire and having people sit there and watch you burn so you can't even run because they're going to shoot you to death? You would have just watched your husband be shot to death. Because Governor William Bradford wanted your land and he complained about how long it took for your black skin to burn. How deep is that? How perverted is that mind to then call forth a national day of thanksgiving, giving thanks for killing savage blacks? Because see, that's all he saw. He didn't care nothing about what we label now as Indian. Their skin was black and he wanted their land. And you don't tell me no. That war went on, the Mohegans, um, the Targanats and the Pequots did that war for two full years. Two full years, they said, you will not take our land and you will not enslave us. We are not having it. We are not doing it. It is not going to happen. The Terran set said, no, we're just not having it. And finally, September 21st, 1638, they had killed enough of all three tribes and took the land and those who were still left were enslaved. See, we get this messed up mentality that there was no slavery up north. No, baby. Slavery was abolished up north as of 1804. But see, for those that are from New York and know the history of that black bull on uh, Wall Street at Merle Lynch, if you don't know the history, let me help you understand because we get it real twist. No, I'm from up north. We ain't had no slavery. Yes, you did. Yes, 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 she did. Where do you think the term longshoreman came from? They had slaves out there working the longshore in Maine, in Massachusetts, in New York, all of that. Don't get it twisted. And so that you have complete clarity as to what that black bull at Merle Lynch actually represents, where you see that square of Merle Lynch, they used to auction slaves right there in New York. But yet many of us have our mortgage with Merle Lynch. Many of us still have our mortgages, our banking, we trade stocks, all of that with Merle Lynch. No, not at all. That black bull represents the black man. Think I'm crazy? Do a simple Google search. What is the history of the Merle Lynch bull? It's not just the logo. So you need to understand as you are celebrating Thanksgiving with your family, it is the celebration of 700 black people being killed. It was called the National Day of Thanksgiving to celebrate the killing of those 700 black people. If you would not cook a meal to celebrate Tamir Rice being shot to death by the police, if you would not think that it was cool to do that for Terrence Crutcher, Philando Castile, Samuel Du Bois, Sandra Bland, Freddie Gregg, Walter Smith, Walter Scott, Skay Gurley, so we don't even talk about them, or Laquan McDonald, if you wouldn't sit down with your family and celebrate their death, why would you then sit down with your family 
and celebrate the death of 700 black people. Because that's what they were. Google the word Pequot. Google the word Pequot and see if you don't see nothing but your family members. And then ask yourself, how would I feel about people having a full celebration, going out their way, spending money they don't have to make this big dinner to celebrate the death of my ancestors? How would I feel? So I wanted to leave you that I do this video for the children so that you have ammunition to teach the truth to your children. What your parents did not get the opportunity to teach you, you now have the ability to teach your grandchildren and to create a different holiday. You don't have to do this on the third or the fourth Thursday of November. No, create a separate holiday. Create an African holiday, an Indian holiday, whatever, black holiday, whatever you want to call yourself. And uh, a rib, uh, Aboriginal American holiday. But don't do it on the day that people were murdered and that was set aside to celebrate their murder. Because then you're a partaker in the celebration ritual. Is that really what you want to do? We've done it out of ignorance. Now that we know better, let's do better. Now that we know better, let's do better. Let's stop giving in to, well, you know, I don't want to disappoint my family. And we've been doing, that sounds as crazy as, well, you know, I don't want to leave the plantation because, you know, Massa been so good to me. No, Massa been lying to you for years. That's the reason that many of our mothers and grandmothers that used to scrub the floor of white people sat and made this big, Thanksgiving dinner for them. That's the reason. And see how deep that is. So they had the black maid come in and make all this food to have at the National Day of Thanksgiving to celebrate killing 700 black people. If you won't celebrate black men being hung and castrated outside of white churches, see the mentality that they had was, well, if he had just been obedient, we wouldn't have had to hang him up. So we're going to finish singing Amazing Grace and then we're going to go out there and we're going to barbecue his testicles. Because see, that's what they did at barbecues. Yeah, that stuff is real. They would take the darkest of the brothers because the greatest concentration of melanin on a black man is at the head of his penis and in his testicles. So they would cut off his testicles and they would roast them and they would eat them right outside of their church. This was in the 1900s. This wasn't long, long time ago, baby. No. So many of us who want to be good friends with the good whites and do all of that, yeah, it's real, real deep. It's real deep because those are the descendants of the people that had no problems hanging your ancestors. We're not talking back in slavery. We're talking not too long ago. Not too long ago. But yet we want to be one. One of the worst things that ever happened to us was integration because we got it twisted. We stopped trusting each other. We stopped patronizing each other's businesses and we want to go to the white people's business. So it is important that on this particular topic, we then take a stand and say, no, I'm not going to keep compromising my children and my grandchildren. And I'm going to sit down and have a real talk with my grandmama and say, grandmama, I can't keep doing this. And I love you. And this is why. And if you want me to come home any other time, I'll come home any other time. But grandmama, I just can't do this and be okay in my soul. I can't do it because now I know better. Hotel, my little girl is on, Alicia. You got to understand, Aisha, you, can't un you got to understand what it is. You have to be able to separate the wheat from the tear and the lies that have continued to be told to us. The red-skinned Indians are not the real indigenous people. It is us. It is us. I do this in honor of my great grandparents, Andrew and Pearl White, who were Aboriginal Americans, 
I give thanks for the lineage and for the blood that flows in my, my veins from them, for the knowledge that I now have and that I'm clear about. Usually on Thanksgiving, since 2005, we fast. And then we'll make a great big spread that Friday. Make whatever tradition you choose to, but don't choose to still. You can't even change the name of it because it's the same energy within that day. Nah, on this day, we are not gonna do it. We are not gonna do it, no. And then you got Black Friday. Now think about this whole Black Friday thing, which is real, real deep. After you take the land of 700 people, I bet the Massachusetts Bay Colony was back in the black again. I bet they were. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And so tomorrow, we're going to go and spend money that we don't have and stand in lines and fight people in order to buy more stuff. Many of us have no stocks, no bonds, no real estate, nothing at all, but we're getting ready to fight to go and buy more stuff that's temporal. No investment properties, nothing. But we're going to stand in the line out in the cold all night long to buy more stuff. Think about what we have been programmed to become. Many of us have lost our indigenous mind. We've lost our African mind, and we have been programmed to become so American that we don't even want to be African. We don't want to be indigenous. We don't want to be the mothers of civilization. We want to fit in. Make the decision today as to what next Thanksgiving is going to be. Make that decision today. Talk to your family. Let them know. Don't just trust me. Buy the book. They've got it on Amazon. So you can read how he, it got so disgusting, I didn't even want to keep looking at it. I didn't even want to keep looking at the book. I was disgusted. Because... <laughs> We were basically it's. We were it's. And he could have cared less. And he took pleasure in the torture. So I've shared the information with you. Go behind me. Again, the word is Pequot. P-E-Q-U-O-T. Pequot Indian. On my page, you will see clearly noted pictures of the Nar Narragansett tribe. All of them look just like us. The little sister in the front, you can see the roots of her hair. Looks like the roots of my hair. And she's got her hair braided. All the rest of them sisters in there, one of them look like Sarah, just beautiful. So research $5 Indians. Look at the pictures of all of the Indians. It is not <laughs> some black people that got with some Indians and met, no. It's who we are. Understand your history and stop being deceived by people who keep selling us lies. The name of the book again is Of Plymouth Plantation, 1620 to 1647 by William Bradford himself. He wrote it himself. Just so it would be real, real clear. I killed him and I'm taking credit for it and I don't care. Please don't let his mentality of I don't care become your mentality. Well, it don't mean that to me because that allows you to be detached. Please reach out, press the share button. Press the share button tomorrow. A lot of people are off with their families, but if we're gonna call ourselves the conscious community, we have to become conscious of everything. We have to know what we're doing on every level so that we have clarity. I give thanks and praise to the ancestors just for the forum to be able to share this. I pray that this continues to mull over because it goes completely against everything you've been taught your entire life, and I respect that. So I thank you for giving me the forum to share this. I ask that you press the share button so that other people get the advantage of it. Please enjoy yourself and go behind me with the research. It's all there. Shimmy M. Hetepu.